Windows 8.1, R. Craig Collins, Temple College, including Windows 8.1 from the start screen and Windows 8.1 from the desktop. Overview, the start screen side of Windows 8.1. Before you start, you have to have a Microsoft account. You don't have to use it later. I'll be giving you a tour of the start screen, including searching, using the corner sides, top and bottom. This will let you access the charms, settings, and power button, as well as multitasking, how to close an app, arranging and sizing apps. I'll also show you the administrative apps, the new help app, using the store, including the two big must-haves for a lot of people, Facebook and Google search. Then we'll discuss using the desktop version of Windows 8.1 using the start key on your keyboard and the start button on the desktop. The big key to remember with this new start button on the desktop is to right click. We'll also discuss shutdown options. We'll customize the desktop to make sure you have this PC, also known as My Computer, Windows Explorer, or File Explorer easily accessible, as well as the control panel. When using this PC, I'll show you how to reveal extensions, map a network drive, etc., as well as how to set up Internet Explorer 11, including compatibility mode, adding trusted sites, and expanding ALT. I'll wrap up by showing you how to create a non-Microsoft user. Again, before you start, you'll need a Microsoft account. If you don't have one, you can create an account as you upgrade or install Windows 8.1. The advantages are you can use the SkyDrive to back up your system and sync devices that use the same account. But you can create other accounts and not use the Microsoft account. More on this at the end of the presentation. One of the hidden gems in Windows has always been to press the Start button and then just start typing the name of the app you wish to use. Let me demonstrate. On the start screen, I simply start typing W-O-R-D and it finds Microsoft Word. One of the most important things to know about using Windows 8.1 is that you need to use your mouse or finger to explore the corners, the sides, the top and bottom to see what these hot screen areas can do for you. So move your finger or your mouse to each corner to explore accessing other running programs, the Start button, and the charms for settings, etc. When you have apps running, try pulling from the right, the top, or the bottom. Move to the top left to see other applications that are running, and then pull to bring those to the front. I move to the upper right-hand corner. I can see the PowerPoint, of course, that's running, plus Calendar and Mail and I can pull those over to switch to that program. In the upper right-hand corner is where you access the charms. You can also use the lower right-hand corner as well. Let me demonstrate. Moving to the upper right-hand corner, the charms come out, just move down to highlight. Or move to the lower right-hand corner. Again, the charms become visible. Move your mouse or finger into the area to highlight. Speaking of the charms, notice this is also where you can search, get to the start button, access and manage devices, and get to the settings. The settings icon is context sensitive. Depending on what program you have running, those will be the settings you access. If only Windows is running, settings will be the Windows settings. If you have an app running, settings will control that particular app. Pulling from the top is critical to close an application or to resize it. Let me demonstrate. Moving to the top, you might even need to start slightly off the screen and pull down. As you pull down a little further, you could either resize to use half the screen or keep pulling all the way down to close the app.
You can also resize your apps to allow multiple apps to run by pulling in from the side. You can also change and resize particular windows. Don't forget the bottom. By pulling up from the bottom, you can get more options. If you're using the mouse, pull on the three dots. If you're using your finger, just swipe from the bottom and pull up. As we've been talking about the start screen, let me show you how you can arrange and size apps and further customize your start screen. The key is to right-click an app or use your finger to press and hold an app, such as the store. If I right-click the store or press and hold, I can get to customize. I can turn off the live tile so it's not constantly updating. I can resize to large, medium, or small. I can actually take it off the start screen, and some apps you can actually uninstall if you no longer need them. Also, if you press and hold, you can rearrange your apps by dragging from one place to another. You can also swipe from the bottom or click this arrow to see your apps more from a bird's eye view. And again, don't forget, you can search. You can also add the administrative apps. I'll move down to get to the charms. Go to settings for the tiles or apps that are running on the start screen. Press tiles and this is where you can turn on or off the administrative apps. New to Windows 8.1 is a new Windows Help and Tips app. Lots of great information about starting apps, getting around, the basic actions, changing settings, and what's new in Windows 8.1. This is what you really need to invest some time in, aside from this YouTube video. Another key app is the store. This is where you download Windows 8.1 if you're already running Windows 8. Don't forget you can move to the lower right hand corner of the screen on the charms area, choose settings, and this is where you can configure your account. And now you can even set your apps to automatically update. Now get the official Facebook app, which is very important to a lot of folks. But my favorite Windows 8 app has got to be Google Search. Let me show you. Temple College. According to Wikipedia, Temple College is a community college based in Temple, Texas, with regional branch campuses at other locations in Central Texas. Finally, a lot of people wonder how to shut down the system. Again, under Settings, you can get to the Power button. Let me show you. Move to the lower right. When the charms come up, go to Settings, choose Settings, and there's the Power Switch. Now let's talk a little bit about the desktop. Remember, I'll be talking a little bit about the start button, the start key on your keyboard, how to customize the desktop to include this PC, the control panel, and using this PC, as well as customizing Internet Explorer 11 and how to create a non-Microsoft user. When using Windows 8.1, if you press the start key on your keyboard, it's the same as pressing the Start button on the desktop. If you have a tablet, you have a Windows button on the tablet. Primarily, the Start is used to move between the Start screen and the desktop. But if you right-click that Start button on the desktop, this is where you get the old familiar Start menu. Let me show you. I go to the desktop. On the desktop is the Start button, which goes back and forth between the desktop and the Start screen. But if I right-click or press and hold, I get the Start menu. A lot of people used to have trouble just figuring out how to shut down Windows 8. 
Again, one of the key items you might have noticed when you right-click the Start button is the ability to shut down. I've always been a fan of keyboard shortcuts, so the Start button plus the letter I will also go into shutdown mode. Or if you're a techie, you can make a shortcut to the shutdown command passing the slash S, slash T, and 1. The key to customizing the desktop is to right-click the desktop and choose Personalize. Right-click. Personalize. From here, locate the Change Desktop Icons link in the upper left-hand corner. Choosing the computer icon adds the This PC icon to your desktop. I strongly suggest you add Computer, which is This PC, as well as the Control Panel. Remember, This PC is the same as the old My Computer or Windows Explorer or the new File Explorer in Windows 8. Let's talk a little bit about using this PC. Then, how to customize the control panel. And again, I'll be showing you how to customize Internet Explorer. Some of the keys when using this PC. Choose the File menu to get help. Choose the Computer tab to map a network drive or to uninstall or change a program. Use the View tab to change between icons, lists, and details, to show hidden items or not, to show file name extensions or not. This is the Properties icon. This is the Make a New Folder icon. And arrows mean more options, allowing you to customize the Quick Access Toolbar. Let me show you. Using the This PC icon, there's the File menu. On the Computer tab, again Properties, Map Network Drive. On the View tab, the ability to change from large icons to details to lists. Again, you can Decide whether or not to show file extensions or show hidden items. And on the quick access bar to see properties of the selected item, to make a new folder, and to customize the quick access toolbar. The control panel typically starts in category view. I find it better to use the icon view. Starting the control panel, if it's in category view, you might consider using icons. This gives you more direct access to the things that you might be looking for. Internet Explorer 11 is a very secure, very robust web browser. However, it tries to be a little overprotective on occasion. Start by clicking the gear in the upper right hand corner of the desktop version of Internet Explorer 11. Go to Compatibility View Settings and make sure some of the frequently used web pages on your machine are added to Compatibility View. Compatibility View allows older or non-compliant websites to function correctly. Again, go to the gear the Tools icon, choose Compatibility View, type in any websites that are misbehaving and choose Add to put those websites into Compatibility View. You can also trust certain websites. Click the Tools icon, go to Internet Options. On the Security tab, choose Trusted Sites and then add the websites that you trust, such as the school's website or your learning management system. Let me show you. Click the gear or the tools icon. Internet options. Go to the security tab. Click on trusted sites. 
choose sites and add the websites that you trust. Some people in web design may find that the alt tag for images isn't showing up in the newer versions of Internet Explorer. This can be turned back on, again using the Tools icon. Under Internet Options, go to Advanced. Near the top, you can add the check mark next to Always Expand ALT Text for Images. Finally, how to create a non-Microsoft user account. Search for PC Settings. Once you get to PC Settings, go to Accounts, Other Accounts, and choose to add an account. Make sure you're using this Sign In without a Microsoft Account option near the bottom of the screen.